Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I trust and hope that you are all well. Before I get started, I would like to give a very special shout out to the reform members of Back to Ashes, Tina Mead, Mana Ash, Normie DW, Chrissy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, Patty's Niece, Samantha Place, and Inner Scare Wifey. The rest of the Back to Ashes membership family can be seen right here on your screen. If you would like to become a member of Back to Ashes or buy me a coffee as a thank you, all of that information can be found down in the description below. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For when we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled Terrifying Shadow People and Ghosts. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play. After that, there will be no more ads within this video. Quick note for those that don't understand how I narrate my stories. I always start with the shortest stories first and end with the longest one in hopes that you will already be asleep. Now, let's get on with the stories, shall we? Well, I was in a room in my house at night, and I had the lights out and a candle lit on a table roughly in the middle of the room. The candlelight was causing all the normal things in the room to cast shadows. However, on one wall there wasn't anything but a box against the wall, and at my ad there was nothing between the candle and that wall but the box. So, on that wall was a box up against it and the box's shadow. Well, at some point, I looked up, and there was a shadow of a man sitting on the box, but there was no one else in the room but me, and it wasn't my shadow. The shadow of the man was very clear. I blinked and rubbed my eyes. I even looked away several times, and when I would look back, he was still sitting there. It was motionless. It stayed for several minutes and I was pretty much frozen in shock and fear. Eventually, I look over and it was gone, just the box and its shadow remaining. I'd also like to add that I'm an extreme skeptic. I pretty much didn't trust anybody's account of the paranormal. I did not believe in ghosts or shadow people. Since the incident, that has changed. But for me... Nothing short of seeing something for myself was going to make me a believer, and I never expected to ever have an encounter. Now I know for a fact these things exist. By these things, I mean things like what I saw. I have no explanation. I felt a shadow person once. Back in December, I had been up for about four days on a methamphetamine binge, and on the fourth night, I stupidly decided to take an Ambien to try and get some sleep. I ended up being awake through all of it, and started to see dark silhouettes walk by me only a few feet away while I was on my couch. Eventually, this progressed into crowds of them walking by as if people were just getting out of a movie theater or a concert. Soon after, I looked across the room and saw two figures that looked like a guy in a lap coat and a girl in a dress, silhouettes from afar, talking to each other and I made the mistake of staring too long. They seemed to notice me looking and the girl figure proceeded to walk towards me and when she got close, she put her arms out. I freaked and went to slap her arms away when she got too close, but when I did, I could feel my hands make contact with her arms. I then turned on the flashlight from my phone on her, and she was completely gone. By far one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. I still get chills thinking about it. This happened to a friend of mine. She told me about it a year or so ago. We'll call her Minji. 
Minji is in her late 20s and works as an English tutor in South Korea. One evening, a few years ago, she was tutoring a high school boy. They were up studying pretty late and the buses stopped running. Being a long way from his house, the boy asked if he could crash on her floor overnight and get the first bus the next morning. Minji was very reluctant because inviting a teenage male student to stay the night didn't sound like a great idea, but he was begging her and eventually she relented. They went back to her one-room apartment and she got into bed while he laid a blanket out on the floor and they both fell asleep. A few hours later, at maybe 2 a.m., the boy wakes Minji up. I'm really hungry. He says, let's go get some food. Minji opens her eyes and looks at him in disbelief. Food? Now? It's 2 a.m. Go back to bed. But the student insists. No, I'm so hungry. Let's eat something now. She tells him that there's some ramen in the kitchen and he can go fix himself some. This doesn't satisfy him. He doesn't want ramen. There's a 24-hour place just down the road. Let's go there. Eventually, after several minutes of persuasion, the boy gets Minji to come with him to the restaurant. They leave the apartment and head out. As soon as they're on the street, a boy turns to Minji and says, I'm not hungry. I woke up in the middle of the night and looked under your bed. There's a man sleeping there. They call the police and discover that a homeless man had been living in Minji's apartment, sleeping under her bed for over two months. The boy only saw him because he was lying on the floor, so he had a clear view under the bed. The police arrested the man and thankfully there were no other issues, but that's by far the creepiest thing that's ever happened to anyone I know. When I was 16, my friends and I had an apartment in the building his parents owned. It was an old building in Chicago and had tunnels that Al Capone and company had built that his dad blocked off. We used the roof as a place to go and smoke our cigarettes. We had to get through the attic to get there. There were no lights, so the only lights we had were from our shitty flip and brick phones. One day, my friend Manny and I were going up to smoke. I told Manny I had to piss, so I did in the apartment. I went up and felt there was something there. It was pretty common for us to mess with each other, so I said, Manny, I know it's you. Quit bucking around. I followed the shadow person thinking it was him. I yelled, Stop playing, I know it's you, as I followed this figure. Then, I heard, from downstairs, Manny say, What? I was terrified. I had just followed him to a corner. I ran back downstairs and asked if he was there. He was, talking to his girlfriend at the time, and I told him I didn't want to go upstairs. I know what I saw. People always try to say, Maybe the shadow was your own. That's not possible because I had a Motorola flip phone at the time, and I was only holding that in front of me. I saw a shadow person, and I know others have too. This incident happened like four years ago. I was 16 years old then. It was the middle of the night and I was asleep. I wasn't alone. I had my sister sleeping in the same room. All of a sudden, I was awakened by something grabbing my thigh and I sat up immediately. All I could see is a hand grabbing me tightly and a figure covered in my blanket. I tried screaming, but I was aware my voice wasn't coming out at all. I tried waking up my sister, but I couldn't even reach her. One thing I was wondering the whole time, 
if it's real or if it's just a dream. So I started to notice every small detail. I usually don't remember about my room, like how I placed my pens that night on my study table or how I threw a pile of clothes on a chair, etc. And I started to pray to Hanuman. I'm Hindu. And I had a bright light behind me and I could see some shadow projection on my wall. And then the figure hidden in my blankets was sucked down and I passed out. I woke up almost immediately and I looked around. Everything seems just the way I remembered. Fun fact, after two days have passed, I had the biggest bruise on my same thigh. And as days passed and when it started fading, the bruise took a shape of a hand with long fingers. I always thought it was an interesting experience. So, many things, but another that stands out was the story of my keys. I lived in this apartment for two years while I finished my undergrad, and I often went home to see my family. On one trip, I told my dear friend John he could feel free to use my house, stay there, or just watch TV to get away from his controlling family he still lived with. I gave him my keys and asked him to be sure not to lose them, as I had already lost the spares. So, he and three of our good friends hole up for the weekend at my house. The first day they got there, John asked the group to help him remember to get the keys and lock up after they were done having movie night. They all said they saw him put the keys in the center of the dining room table, and they commenced to having fun. A few hours later, they are heading out. John goes to get the keys. They are not on the table anymore. He freaks out because he had been so sure to say it to everyone, and everyone saw him put them there. Then, it becomes a key hunting party, and everyone starts looking everywhere. Did they fall on the floor? Two hours later, and John is near tears, and everyone is freaked out. Now... None of those people except one, Sarah, knew my apartment had strange things going on. She later told me she could feel a strange energy in the house after the keys went missing, like a tingly feeling of anticipation. She didn't want to scare John as she was already feeling guilty for maybe losing my keys, so she didn't mention any of this until I got back. It's almost an hour Three and all four of them are gathered in the front room, around the corner from the dining room, and talking about what to do. I think they were right about to call me. That's when the whole group hears a distant clank in the other room, and they all jump a bit. John goes running around the corner, and the keys are just there, where he left them, in the middle of the table. Now, John doesn't believe in anything supernatural. He always made fun of me for being into witchcraft, ghosts, etc. And Sarah told me he went all white, which was impressive for a very tainted Chinese man, and ran out the door. Everyone else walked out after him pretty quickly, and they locked the door. When I got home, the house was a bit disheveled, but everything was as it should be. John, nearly in tears, described what happened. At first, I thought they were joking, but all four of them had the same story, and they aren't very big jokesters. Sarah told me she wouldn't come to my house anymore, as I think this was like the fourth strange thing she had seen, and it was by far the most intense. I kind of just had to shrug, because I had to keep living there, and if I freaked out, well... Where would I go? It did always seem like what strange happenings in my apartment affected guests and others more than me. I also am not scared by stuff like that. And in fact, I think it's interesting and cool. So maybe that was why they didn't mess with me a ton. But still a little. Either way, the apartment was a lot of my friends first and only brushed with the paranormal 
while for me it was more like observing a science experiment. Sometimes I miss it, but I don't miss waking up to shadow people standing in my doorway at 3 in the morning, or having friends that go and sleep in my backyard in the middle of the night because they are too scared of my little two-bedroom. Good old apartment number 7. This happened to my husband and I this past summer of 2015. We were house-sitting for these rich people in between our big move to the mainland. We're from Hawaii. And some crazy, creepy stuff started happening just a couple days in. The first weird thing that happened was we got there, and I couldn't find out how to get the motion sensor light in the entry garage hallway place to turn off. We thought nothing of it. A few days later, I was watching TV, and you can see the front door from the living room, and I saw a shadow man walking by the front door. I wasn't particularly freaked out, because unfortunately, shadow people are frequent visitors of mine. I think it must be a Hawaii thing, because everyone has seen them there. I think it must have been that same evening that I hadn't seen my husband for several minutes. So I called out to him and saw that the front motion detecting light flip on, again right at that moment. So I walked out to it, then heard him go, what? From the backyard, not the front yard. I quickly walked to the backyard through the house, and staring back towards the front yard, I saw an orb zoom out of the house and into the yard. A side note on orbs. I've watched those paranormal shows on Discovery Channel, but never thought they were real until I actually saw them. I'd only seen one once before this time. Anyways, pretty creepy, but fast forward a few days. A different motion detecting light started going crazy one night, flipping on and off for varying intervals. At this point, my husband who you might call the rational one, is totally freaked out. I, however, felt extremely curious and wanted to investigate, which is so weird for me because I'm a total scaredy cat. I even make my husband walk me to the bathroom in the middle of the night because I'm too scared to go by myself. But I felt compelled to go towards the garage and upstairs area. There's an apartment above the garage and figure out what was going on. We got a flashlight and shined it into the garage and apartment windows, and we couldn't help feeling this very, very weird dread and fear emanating from the garage. Even though I was curious, I also felt it in the pit of my stomach, like some overwhelming depression and evil. We call it quits, locked the doors, and went to bed right after that. There were several other encounters while we were staying there. One evening, I heard someone say, Ding dong. Kind of like someone would when they get to a friend's house to inform them of their presence. After which the dogs, we were also dog sitting, went nuts barking at the front door although there was no one there. One night, when we were walking into the bedroom, something brushed up against my arm, and when I turned to look, I saw a person walking the other way down the hallway, turning a corner. Myself and one of my dogs saw an orb fly out of a room we were in. The dog definitely saw it too, and he looked freaked out. One morning while showering, I dropped my razor on the ground, and then when I bent down to pick it up, it was back on the countertop across the bathroom. One morning, my husband dropped his toothbrush, then he couldn't find it for an hour, and it reappeared back on the countertop. I've had a lot of ghostly and paranormal encounters in my life, but this summer just puts it over the top. At one point, I was in tears asking my husband, why am I so perceptive and why do these things keep happening to me? I've been haunted in the past by negative spirits. I know I probably sound like a cuckoo nut job, but I'm just your average grad student, 
so I get really fearful whenever the paranormal activity starts acting up. At the time, my late wife and I were living in a double-wide mobile home, which we had purchased new that was sitting on a spot that has never had house of any kind. And it is at least a thousand feet from where any house is or has ever been to, to the best of my knowledge. In light of this, you could not think that our house would be a likely location for a haunting. However, my wife and I have on occasion seen several rather strange occurrences there, the most startling of which I will relate here. This event took place one night after my wife and I retired for the evening. Normally at night, my wife and I leave a light on all night in the bathroom, furthest from our bedroom because there are usually children in the house. That bathroom is just outside the children's bedrooms and would provide them a nightlight. However, on that night, all the children were staying somewhere else, and there was no one in the house except my wife and I. As was usual, though, we had left the light in the bathroom on out of habit, and it cast a glow through our open bedroom door weakly lighting the room. Some time had passed after we had laid down, and I was unable to sleep. I assumed, though, that my wife was asleep because her breathing had become regular and reached a point at which it sounded like she was asleep. While lying there unable to sleep, I began to become aware of a presence that I could not explain other than to say I knew we were not alone. I was laying there trying to convince myself that it was only my imagination, when suddenly and silently a figure moved in through our bedroom door and proceeded parallel to our bed in a smooth, gliding motion. Then, rounding the corner of our bed, took up a fixed position at the foot of the bed. Strangely, I seemed to be acutely aware that this entity was conscious of us and was intently watching us while I was laying there watching it. The entity can best be described as a something that had the appearance of black smoke or shadow. However, it was more material that either of these but less material than a person. The strangest thing about the whole situation was my complete lack of fear. Although I was acutely aware that some being had entered our room, and there was no doubt in my mind that it was absolutely not of this earth, at least not as we perceive it. It did not come to arouse my fear response in me. I would say it aroused a feeling that would fit somewhere between creepy and curiosity, especially considering the fact that I was sure it was aware of me as I was aware of it. After some time, I had almost convinced myself that I was imagining it due to my drowsy condition and the dim light. Suddenly, I realized that my wife was no longer breathing like she was asleep. Her breathing had become almost silent. Speaking in a calm voice, I said, Honey, you awake? To which she answered, Yes. Then I added, Do you see anything? I was expecting her to be, What do you mean? But instead, much to my surprise, she said, you mean that thing standing at the foot of the bed? When she said this, I did finally become somewhat nervous, and we both then began to pray. We lay there for about ten minutes, softly saying prayers, and then it vanished. But it didn't just disappear. Over a period of about twenty seconds became less solid, like smoke clearing and our perception of it, resistance became weaker and weaker until it was just not there anymore. Then, it was as if it never been there. Nothing like this has ever happened since, and the only evidence that it ever did are my memories of it. I 
I hope I'm not too late to the party, because I have a story that still freaks me the hell out. When I was in high school, my parents decided to relocate our family to a big house in what felt like the middle of nowhere, and I swear to you that it was haunted. It's up on a hill, isolated, with no neighbors around for a mile. Just going up our driveway was pretty long. The previous owner had inherited the place from his parents, who had died, but he lost the house after struggling with his drug addiction. The property was foreclosed, and there was all kinds of weird shit drawn on the walls when we moved in, so we gutted and renovated the entire home. From what I've learned watching Supernatural, renovation is apparently a surefire way to wake up any angry spirits. Well, I was already a pretty paranoid kid, but this new house creeped me out to no end. It had large windows in every room that pointed to the groves. We didn't have blinds or covers or drapes, so I always felt like I was being watched. I'd be home alone on multiple occasions and hear a cupboard door slam shut very loudly or hear pounding footsteps going up and down the stairs. I would literally lock myself in the bathroom, the only room in the entire house without a window, until a family member came home when this happened. Just weird noises and always feeling like I'm being watched. The worst experience was when I went to attend a Halloween dance my junior year. I dropped off my siblings at the dance to realize I'd left an important part of my costume behind. I drove back home to retrieve the item, and the moment I opened the door to my house, something just felt wrong. I was home alone, the house was dark, my body entered flight or fight mode for no apparent reason, and I felt totally freaked out. I ran inside, grabbed what I needed, and ran back to my car with record speed. As I raced down the driveway, shaking and crying, my nerves a complete mess, I looked behind me and saw that a dark figure was standing in the window of our house, watching me. Now, I don't know how I knew that figure was there, but my body sensed it before I actually saw him in the window. I'm just glad I got out in time, and I sure as hell didn't sleep well that night. I still get freaked out thinking about it. I'm glad I don't live there anymore because it just had a negative energy all about it. I saw a shadow person once. I didn't know that's what it was called until much later. I was living in a house on Laguna Beach that had been there since the 1920s. In its history, it has been a speakeasy, a brothel, and a house for smuggling illegal immigrants. One day, my new wife and I were having an argument. I can't even recall what it was about. She walked down the block to get a cup of coffee and cool off, and I was alone in the house. The way the place was built was incredibly haphazard. There was a bathroom and living room on one side, then a bathroom with two entrances. On the other side of the bathroom was a hallway that had windows in one side and two bedrooms on the other. From my bedroom, I could look across the hall into the bathroom, then through the bathroom and down the other hall. I was standing at my dresser, and I just noticed movement out of the corner of my eye and looked down there. There was... And honest to God, this gives me goosebumps just typing it. Seventeen years later, a black figure. It was maybe three feet tall, and it was only vaguely humanoid. It looked like black scribbles, like something had scribbled a human shape, but the scribbles moved, like electricity arching. That's the best way to describe it. There's no sound that I could remember. I distinctly remember when I saw it, I wasn't afraid. I was just like, what the hell is that? Then, it noticed me looking at it. 
I can't say it turned around. It just focused on me, I guess. Then I got scared. I didn't move, didn't scream, nothing. I was just frozen because it just freaking came at me. It rushed down the hall towards me. I have no idea what it intended, but as soon as it entered the bathroom, the door closest to me just slammed shut on its own. Then I screamed. I yelled for my wife. She wasn't home. I went the hell outside into the daylight and didn't go back in until she got home about 10 minutes later. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe I saw something supernatural, but I know I saw something. I don't know what it was. If any of you know what it is that I saw, I would appreciate any and all suggestions. When I was 18, I purchased my first home. It was a small run-down foreclosure home that I got for next to nothing. A perfect fixer-upper for my young son and I. My dad is a carpenter, and so he was able to do most of the updates for me before we moved in. Dad didn't tell me outright that anything supernatural ever happened to him, but on one occasion, when I arrived to the house to help out, he asked me, Was that you a little bit ago? I said, No, I just got home. And he just shrugged. The other time, he was under the house working on something, and he kept hearing footsteps above him. Convinced it was my mom or I, he yelled a few times before assuming we couldn't hear him and giving up. I didn't chalk these up to paranormal experiences, though, because I had never really had a paranormal experience and wasn't even sure I believed in them. Once my son and I moved into the house, I slowly started noticing odd occurrences. I constantly was thinking I heard the door to the breezeway open and close, and the sound of shuffling as if somebody was arriving home. But of course, nobody was there. The sound of footsteps upstairs was also very common. The first time my boyfriend came to the house and stayed the night, we were fast asleep when the stereo came on at full blast, scaring the hell out of us. The next morning, we were sitting at the bar in the kitchen having breakfast, and we began discussing the previous night's events that my boyfriend proclaimed. If there's really something in this house, I wished it would just show itself. As soon as he finished his sentence, we heard a loud crash and we turned to look. A mini cooler was tumbling down the stairs with enough force that it left a dent in the wall at the bottom of the staircase. Another time, my boyfriend, our son, and myself were all sleeping in the living room. It was a very hot summer, and we didn't have central air conditioning at that time. So we had pulled the mattress out onto the living room floor where the window AC unit was. At around 3 a.m., we woke to the sound of an alarm clock going off. We didn't use an alarm clock, so we jumped up to try to find the source of the noise so it wouldn't wake our son. I'll never forget when I found it. I followed the noise to a plastic bag that was beside the couch that had some of my boyfriend's belongings in it and pulled out an alarm clock. I was frantically hitting buttons trying to get it to stop before I decided to just unplug it. When I grabbed the cord, I realized it wasn't plugged into anything at all. I just held it staring at it and held it up for my boyfriend to see before it stopped just as suddenly as it had started. The next day, he inspected the clock, convinced it had batteries in it, but it didn't even have a battery compartment. The final story I'll share was the most scary to me. I was in the living room watching TV while my son slept upstairs. The baby monitor was beside me, and from my position, I could look straight up the stairs and see the door to my son's room. 
Well, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow dart across the upstairs hallway, and simultaneously there was a short burst of static interference on the baby monitor. The hairs on my arms stood straight up, and I just stared up the stairs at my son's door. The hallway was illuminated by a nightlight, and my son's door was white, so I could see fairly well. It looked like a head was peeking out of the room, across the hall from my son's door, but I thought surely it was my imagination. After about a minute, it stepped out. The thing that terrified me the most was that it didn't glide across the floor like you see in the movies. Its movements were so human-like and distinct and three-dimensional that if it hadn't been a stark black silhouette, I would have thought it was an intruder. It stepped out of the doorway and took a couple steps towards the hall to my son's door, then turned its head like it wanted to check if I was watching before it stuck its head and shoulders through my son's door, as if to have a peek to see what was in there. When it did this, I mustered the courage to yell, No! And it pulled its head out and quickly dematerialized in such a strange way. It was like it shrunk into itself until nothing was left. I have goosebumps just writing this. Anyway... I bounded up the stairs and grabbed my son and left immediately. I stayed the night at my mom's house for about a week after that. Eventually, I sold that house, and I've never had a chance to ask the owners if they have had any strange experiences there themselves. This is kind of a weird thing for me to talk about, purely because our family moved out of this house in about 2013, and it's just something that we never really talked about when we moved out of it. To start this off, we moved from a loud and quite bad neighborhood into a private house in a small part of an industrial estate in 2008. And the good part was these houses were fairly new in comparison to old builds, so there wasn't any problems. The house itself was laid out as compact as it could get, with both me and my brother suffering from closet rooms, aka tiny ass rooms that could barely fit a single bed in. The first thing that I guess could contribute to this slew of weird occurrences was the fact that my father was slowly getting worse off job-wise as he was a private taxi driver at first, which he did get some money for us to live off of, but the money just kept dwindling over time to the point that we could barely live off the money that he was bringing in to us. Sometimes, he could be bringing back under 40 pounds a night, and even on the occasion, he would come back with only one ride's pay. Obviously, this started causing quite a lot of arguing between my parents. The only thing that makes me question this as something that could be a catalyst as to what happens later on is the fact that my dad was doing well in this job before we moved to this house. Sure, it isn't the best of jobs to have, but there were barely any days that my dad would come home with basically no money but it was becoming more and more common as the months passed when we moved into this house. Another strange occurrence is that my dog, Gracie, had this one place in our kitchen right next to the entrance of it, which she started to dig at constantly for about five to ten minutes each time. We found it pretty funny at first, as her digging motions were just pretty funny, because she was a fluffy dumb dog. It only started becoming more weird when it got to the point where Gracie was leaving so much scratch marks on the floor and made us realize just how much she's digging at the same spot in particular. And that's when we started entertaining the idea that there could be bodies underneath us. But this was just kind of a ooh so spooky joke between our family basically. Now, thinking back on this makes me a bit unnerved because whilst I was in primary school and I first moved to this town, 
I was told that the houses that me and her live in are built on graves, aka a burial ground. Now, I don't know if this is true because like I just said, I was told this in primary school. And we're all quite young children at this point who believe anything is spooky. So, some time passes, about two years if I can remember rightly, and my mom starts complaining about getting headaches and them not going away and I'm not going to lie. I didn't really pay her any mind because headaches shouldn't really be that big of a deal, you know? They pass after some time. The only problem is, my mom's headache didn't really pass, they just got worse. Now my mom is the kind of person who avoids going to doctors for things that are deemed unnecessary in her head, as she doesn't want to burden them with something that should pass, but it literally became months that she was weak and having terrible migraines and she wasn't doing anything about it until one time she was walking down the stairs as I was walking to go to the kitchen, and as we crossed, she told me she really doesn't feel well and her nose started bleeding. Obviously, at this point, we all made her go to the doctor and find out immediately what was wrong with her. My mom went through a lot of stuff with the doctors and even had blood tests and scans done to possibly find out what was wrong with her only for them to be stumped and basically tell my mom that they don't know what is wrong with her or how to treat her as her blood tests were showing up fine and there was nothing coming up on the scans so for all the doctors knew they basically thought she was a-okay when obviously me and my family knew that she clearly wasn't. This went on for a while of my mom going back and forth to the doctors with no improvement yet not really much of a decline, just a steady, constant migraine. So that's the part with my mom happening. Another strange occurrence that I can point out is that once all of all were sat in the living room together watching a movie, when we all jumped because of a big bang and one of the patio doors behind us just completely shattered, but still stayed within the frame of the door, but there was literally no point of impact on the glass to show that it had been hit. The dogs were in the room with us too, so they couldn't have possibly been a suspect, and there was no one in our back garden as far as we knew as it was broad daylight, and we always had a view from the back garden, from the couches as we would have seen. Fast forward a little more, and this is when things start getting uncomfortable for me. I've only ever had sleep paralysis three times in my life, and two of those times happened in that house and the scariest things I've ever been through. I was lying on my back staring at my ceiling just trying to get some shut-eye because I had school in the morning, but it was clear that I was just not going to be able to sleep because I was so awake. I couldn't be asked moving and actually doing something, so I just stared at the ceiling, thinking about life, and that was the biggest mistake I've genuinely ever made. I remember just hearing a weird-ass ringing in my ears and feeling the door of my room opening up more, and that was when the instant, what the hell, get up and look, mantra started in my head. But I just couldn't move at all. The only thing I could do was just stare at the ceiling as I was doing, and man, 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 whatever it was I was feeling approaching me started coming up from the bottom of my bed, and as it got onto the bottom of my bed, I felt the bed dip so damn much to the point that I felt like my back was straining from how bent my legs were supposedly being placed, and it just didn't stop. It then kept coming up closer to the top of the bed, and the only way I knew this was because the dips in the bed were coming closer towards me. The strongest fear I felt was when it finally stopped moving, but God, I really wished it didn't, because it was literally lying down next to me staring at me, but I couldn't physically see it. I could heavily feel it, I felt that huge dip in the bed next to me, and I felt it move. 
This terrified me so much when I woke up that I couldn't sleep in that room or on my own for a little while. The reason why this is sticking out to me is because, like I said, I've had sleep paralysis before one time before this had happened, and it just didn't feel the same. This experience that I had just had some weird air about it, and I hated it. I did say it happened twice, but the second time of this happening was a lot weaker due to me knowing that this is all just sleep paralysis and I woke up by wiggling my toes. Here's where I only put two and two together. Until years after, we'd left this house, and I started thinking about it and connecting a few dots. My brother once told me that he refused to sleep in my room after he had had a bad nightmare when sleeping in there. Obviously, I questioned him about it, like, hey, I kind of want to know why you found my room spooky. And, man... I really wished I didn't. I genuinely wish I didn't even piece these two together because it made my heart sink. Basically, my brother had a nightmare in my room where he was staring into my bathroom as it was easy to do that whilst in my bedroom and the shower curtain was pulled over. What was horrifying, though, is that there was a tall, weird-ass freaking thing staring at my brother over the top of the shower curtain and it just stared and stared until it slowly pulled the shower curtain over and made its way over to my room. My brother told me that as soon as whatever it was got to the door of my room, that he immediately woke up, scared shitless. Now, the reason why this almost made me shit myself when I was thinking over these things is how my sleep paralysis starts out. It's basically the ending of my brother's nightmare continuing. Here's where shit hits the fan. About a year or two before, we moved out of this house on the 2nd of September. On my first day of year 7, our dog, Gracie, had a tragic accident. But anything about the accident just screams suspicious. Gracie was a super healthy dog, and she was only 2 years old but shown no signs of being possibly unhealthy or having any problems in the future of her life. But this whole shit show happened in the span of about two days possibly, maybe even less. Gracie started vomiting and shitting out blood to the point that it was making puddles in the floor and she could do nothing but hide under our couch, shaking because she didn't understand what was happening, and clearly... Neither could we. We were all shocked, panicked, upset, and just didn't know what to do because it wouldn't stop, so we raced her to the PDSA. We immediately had to give her in, and they said she will have to stay in overnight so they can find out what's wrong. Gracie died that night in isolation. One thing that stuck out and still does to this day is what they said about her death. They treated Gracie for a super fatal dog disease named Parvo and Gracie died due to toxic shock from the treatment they gave her and that they're sorry but they didn't possibly know what was wrong with our dog if it wasn't Parvo. Sound familiar? My mom being extremely ill with nosebleeds and the doctors don't know what's possibly wrong. My mom then became super upset and finally somewhat suspicious of the house and chalked it up to the fact that carbon monoxide poisoning might be the suspect here. I have quite a few questionable thoughts about that due to the fact that my mom was the only one who was seriously ill and showing these signs whilst everyone else was okay. Even so, we had moved out before we even checked the house for carbon monoxide poisoning. And well, I guess I'm just glad I left that house, but I still do have a lot of weird thoughts about it. I think that this house just had a bad omen about it, and I low-key worry about the people who have moved into it now, because there's definitely just something off about that house. And I think as much as my mom denies it, it has completely impacted her as she's now looking up things like 
feng shui for our home and also kicked up a lot of shit because the new house we moved into is number 13. But I think this house is pretty great considering my mom is in great health now and both my parents have really high paying jobs, working together, and even my brother is getting on with his life great now too. Basically, just want to ask what your guys' thoughts might be. Do you think I'm just being too suspicious, or do you think that something weird was going on in that house? Okay, so quick setup. This takes place at my childhood home, which sat on the edge of the woods. To separate the woods from the yard, my dad placed large boulders along the tree line. There is also a large mound of dirt from the foundation of the home in the woods. My youngest brother walks with a limp and was rather short and pudgy at this time. This is all slightly important. I was about 12 years old when it started. My two brothers, Jerry and Joe, their friend, Nate, and I were playing hide-and-seek around the house. The entire property was fair game, Woods included. My youngest brother, Joe, was it, and me and the other two boys hid behind the dirt mound. We waited there for 15 minutes and started getting worried because he never came looking for us. I remember volunteering to find him, and I ran all around the property, but never did find him. I went inside, and he was playing a board game with some other friends. Okay, no big deal. I asked an adult how long he had been inside, and they said 30 minutes. I ran back outside to tell the others. When I got to the hiding spot, they were laughing. They asked how I got away from Joe. I told them that he had been inside the entire time. They stopped laughing and looked at each other. I asked what was going on. Turns out, they saw what they thought was Joe running behind me in the woods. As I reached the rocks, he just disappeared. We saw him around a lot, but kinda ignored it. Chalked it up to kids' imagination, and played in the woods in groups. A few years later, we had another friend over who had never been at my house. We were all playing inside when he came in the room and asked why Joe was playing in the woods alone. We explained that Joe was at a friend's house and there was no way it was him. He insisted it was. We asked who told him about the man and he had no idea what we were talking about. It still creeps me out to this day. For context, my brother has always said something follows him. This thing he says in his own flare me summarizing whispers to him. Jay, which is a fake name of course, was diagnosed with schizophrenia and low bipolar disorder, has heavy drinking and drug gabbits, the worst luck you've ever seen and extremely accident prone to injury. This night is the scariest encounter with Jay's demon. There's two more encounters. That's for another time. The night is cloudy, and my friend B and I decided to smoke pot for the first time. We made a fire by the river. It began to sprinkle a little bit, but there's so many trees by the river that we never really felt anything from the natural tree canopy. It had only been around 30 minutes and we decided to make a fire. The night so far was proving to be pretty fun. That's until it happened. We hear a strange noise, then loud cracking, almost like a tree falling over and snapping every branch. All three of our heads dart to the right as we see a 12 inch thick branch take on a massive weight as it's rocking from the forest. I immediately feel this knot of dread in my stomach. No one is speaking, just the noises from the river and crackling of the fire. 
The best way I can try to describe this is a large black void just landed on that branch. No silhouette, no brief glimpse from the light of the fire. Just an absolute lack of light just crashed through a thick old try and landed on this branch. I can't tell you why, but in my head, I knew it was looking at us, and if we moved, we were dead. Ten minutes must have flown by, which felt like hours. I try to break the silence, and my brother grabs my arm slowly and says, Shut the hell up, quickly and quietly. Fear has gripped my mind, and I can't help but stare back at this thing staring at us. And as quick as it came, it shot back straight up through the tree, breaking more branches as it left. Like being freed from its grip, my brother shoots out of his chair and starts running back to the house. My friend B and I follow quickly. We confirmed all the details with each other and rarely spoke of it. I don't know what that was. I don't know what it wanted. I just know it's always followed my brother either messing with you or slamming doors, it still haunts him to this day. Anyone with any advice, I would surely appreciate it. I lived in the lovely flat on the coast of UK. I never had any problems with paranormal things there, but... One night, I woke up, which isn't odd. I wake up most nights instantly being very awake. So, I needed to use the restroom, which was across the square landing. That was totally empty. I did what I needed to do, opened the bathroom door, and was reaching up to turn the bathroom light off as I would leave to go back to my bedroom. But, this time, as my arm was about to reach up, while opening the bathroom door, I saw this small shadow person just standing there on the empty landing. Nothing was casting the shadow, as the only light was coming from the bathroom. Directly added, so it makes no sense to have a regular shadow in that area. And a small lamp lighting up my bedroom. It was cream walls and carpet, so all very clear. It was about the size of a cat sitting upright. No features, just very, very black. Not the color of a regular shadow. I had no idea what it was. What did it want? Why was it here? These were my thoughts. So I shut the door to consider what to do. I must have been in there five minutes at least, maybe ten. I figured I couldn't stay in there, so I opened the door slowly to see if it was still there. It had gone. I scanned the floor of my bedroom to see if it was there. It wasn't. So I ran back to my bedroom, leaving my lights on, and dived into bed. I wasn't scared, but I was shaking up or surprised to have seen something. As nothing paranormal had ever happened there, I must have fallen back to sleep eventually, but I never saw it again. When I moved into my current place, Something was drawing on the soles of my feet during the first or second night of living here. It woke me up. My partner was next to me in bed, so I tried to stay calm. The drawing was still going on, so I decided to fidget and turn over bringing my feet towards me. It finally stopped. It took me a long time to get back to sleep. The bedroom door didn't open. The doors make a lot of noise and would have heard it. Plus, the floorboards creak and absolutely no noise of anyone moving. I must have been awake 30 minutes to an hour at least, so it definitely wasn't the housemate. Again, it hasn't happened again, but we both sleep terribly in this house. Other things have happened while living here, so the house has something here. A few things, I think. They mostly happen to me, but these are the strangest experiences I have ever had. I 
I used to live in a big Victorian era home that was chopped into four apartments. There was a tenant living in the apartment right next to mine. She was a single mother with three kids. She was also addicted to drugs. After they moved in, I started waking up to the hat man shadow. He would be staring at me and usually went back to her place. I didn't feel it was evil, but it had a very strong presence. First, I thought I was having dreams, but my dog, she slept on the bed next to me, was very aware of him. She didn't act scared or aggressive, but she was very alert watching him too. This woman was very paranoid and sometimes would take off for weeks at a time, and her mother would have to come over to help with the kids. Whenever she was away, the hat man didn't appear. On the day they moved out, her mother said, Everyone thinks it's the drugs, but that isn't it. We were interrupted by another neighbor, and I never got to finish the conversation. I tried to find her because I wanted to know more, but I didn't have any luck. Hatman never came back again. And that, dear listeners, is the end of these true terrifying shadow people and ghost stories. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you kindly. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll read to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night.